before I tell you who I am, I'll tell you who I'm not, or rather what I'm not. I'm not a public speaker. I'm an artist. I'm also a Southerner. I was born and raised in the Arkansas Delta. I have a Southern accent. Siri on my iPhone has trouble understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope that's not a problem here today. There are certain words that Southerners avoid saying, except in the presence of other Southerners. I would try to circumvent those words. Circumvent is not one of them. We, <laughs> these are some of the words that I will avoid saying. <laughs> However, I might need to say some of these words today. <laughs> like, a, like I said, I was born and raised in the Arkansas Delta. Each fall, beginning with my first year in school up until the time I graduated, I picked cotton. When one is picking cotton, they have plenty of time to think and to plan and to dream. When I was picking cotton, I dreamed of becoming an artist. This might be a strange career goal for a boy growing up in a town of 650 people whose main industries were two cotton gins, but I dreamed of becoming an artist. I kept that dream alive, and in my early 20s, I enrolled in the college, in Memphis College of Art. I majored in painting. While I was there, one time I went home for spring break week to visit my parents. And while I was there, they left me alone one day while they went to visit relatives. So when I was home alone, I decided I would pierce my ear. Back then, it wasn't socially acceptable for a guy to do this, but I did it anyway. I did worry about what my parents might say when they returned. Surprisingly, all my mother said was, how come you only pierced one ear? <laughs> my father didn't say anything. This really bothered me. A couple of days later, my father and I were sitting in the yard in some lawn chairs under a shade tree, and I couldn't take it any longer, so I said, Daddy, did you notice that I pierced my ear? He said, it's your damn ear. You can do with it as you please. <laughs> he then went on to say, there's a whole big world out there that I don't understand and you do. You need to do and you need to be whatever it takes to make you happy. This was a great gift from my father. He had given me his blessing to be whoever I needed to be in order to be happy. And I knew one thing that was going to make me happy was to continue my dream of becoming an artist. So that's the career that I chose. For several years, I was an oil painter. Oil is another word that's difficult for Southerners to say. <laughs> I like that medium, but I changed mediums when I moved to a new home and I didn't have a studio space where I could paint with oil, a very messy medium, so I switched to watercolors because of the ease of cleanup. I loved watercolors, but because I approached that medium with the eye of an oil painter, I broke the rules of watercolor. I learned that for an artist to break the rules, they can create a unique style for better or for worse that will set them apart. I still paint with that same style today. Eventually, I thought it would be advantageous to me to move to Eureka Springs, a resort town in the Arkansas Ozarks, and attempt the long-standing reputation of being an art colony. Creating art can be a solitary profession. An artist spends a lot of time alone in their studio. I wanted to be among my peers. I not only wanted to create art, I wanted to talk art, I wanted to share ideas, I wanted to see other people's work, I wanted to have a support group, I wanted to make artist friends. It's said that Eureka Springs has between 200 and 450 artists living there. I think the 450 number is somewhat of an exaggeration. Artists are prone to exaggerate and to embellish. <laughs> it's in our nature. But there are lots of artists there, and I made lots of artist friends, and I mean lots. Living there has been stimulating, sometimes overly stimulating. For the past 25 years, I've lived on White Street on the upper historic loop in Eureka Springs. I can walk out on my front porch, I can look in any direction, and I can see the home or apartment of an artist that's living and working there. On my street, there are two artists that had attended the Memphis College of Art. One of them was in my same class. Eureka Springs truly is an art mecca. We have an arts council, one of only two in Northwest Arkansas, the other one's in Fayetteville. 
We have a gallery association. We have monthly gallery scrolls. We have more galleries in town than any other town in Arkansas. We have art events all throughout the year. Each May, we have a month-long arts festival that features more than 60 art events. This past May, we celebrated our 25th anniversary of that festival. For the past five years, Eureka Springs has been listed by American Style Magazine as one of the top 25 arts destinations in the United States. This year, we're number eight. Granted, we are in the small city category, and that's for towns with populations of less than 100,000. Eureka Springs has 2,200 people. However, in our category, we are ahead of Carmel, California, Laguna Beach, California, Taos, New Mexico, and we're only two positions behind the little town of Santa Fe, New Mexico. I think we're calling, yeah. I think because of the increase in the number of art interested tourists coming to Eureka Springs that we are going to become number one. It might not be next year, but we are becoming the number one arts destination in the United States. And it's not just Eureka Springs, but it's all of Northwest Arkansas that's seeing an increase in the emphasis on the arts. There's a lot of art activity going on. A few examples. Fayetteville has the Walton Arts Center. They have a thriving arts community with their underground art. And of course, they have the Department of Art at the University of Arkansas. Springdale has the Art Center of the Ozarks, and galleries are moving into Rogers. The same thing is true of Bentonville. There's a lot of art activity going on here, and galleries are opening up in downtown Bentonville. I think because of an increase in dialogue among the arts communities in Northwest Arkansas, in an effort to cross-promote, that we are getting the word out there that we are becoming a major cultural destination. When we work together, we elevate each other. And Crystal Bridges, how could I not mention the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville? The museum has already had a major impact on the area. The number of visitors to the museum exceeds expectation, and it's been documented as to the great economic impact the museum is having. What can't be measured is the impact that the museum is having on the psyche of artists living here. We feel like we are somewhere. <laughs> and that somewhere is becoming known to the world. And helping us to get the word out there to the world about what we are becoming is the web. Artists and galleries from Northwest Arkansas have Facebook pages. Artists living here are blogging, they're tweeting, they're using Google Plus and LinkedIn. There are numerous standalone websites that feature artists and galleries from our area. For the past two years, I have been the executive director of the Eureka Springs Artist Registry, a nonprofit that represents 436 members, all artists, not all from Eureka Springs, but from the greater Ozarks area. The registry provides a free online web page each of its members. We are showing the world what we are making here in the way of art. The registry also has a Facebook page with more than 2,200 members, and I write a monthly newsletter for the registry that goes out online to more than 1,100 subscribers, some as far away as England and the Netherlands. The word is getting out there to the world that we are becoming a cultural destination. I know this. I know that we are becoming the place to see art. We are becoming the place to see art made. And important for artists living here, we are becoming the place to buy art. I know this. I know that we are becoming a major arts destination. I also know that it's quite all right for a child to dream of, it, of becoming an artist. I'm glad that I'm an artist, and I'm glad that I pierced my ear.